friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. We've got another unique project. I say unique because this is the only one there is like this one. This is a kind of a funny or humorous looking peg head there, I think. You can see there's a one of a kind vine going up the fretboard. It's got very large frets in it. You can see the scroll there is a little different. And there's what the back looks like. Pretty back. It's overall a pretty mandolin. It, I mean, I think that overall the mandolin's kind of cool. The story I remember from the customer is that uh, apparently he had a friend build the mandolin for him, and the friend apparently had built many guitars or several guitars or something like that. So he was a guitar builder, and this was his one and only or first mandolin that he ever built. If you can build a guitar, then I would say that somewhere down the road you could build a mandolin, you know. I, you know, I see a few things that as a mandolin player that I, you know, I'm not totally crazy about. One of them for me, you know, and I know this is different with everybody, but is these large frets and these are guitar frets. I'm not crazy about those. Uh, we're going to scallop this down. We're going to change the frets out. We're going to scallop this down. He's already put a deer antler saddle on here. I would play it for you, except the strings were already loose and there was one string missing, so I'm not even gonna bother playing it beforehand. It's not gonna matter. Uh, the customer wants what he wants and that's what we're gonna do. He wants a new tailpiece also. Now, if you notice up here, we've got gold tuners up here and a silver tailpiece. Well, we've ordered a James tailpiece to put on here. That's a real nice tailpiece. This is what I use on my mandolins now, all my custom mandolins, and it's gold, of course. Very nice tailpiece. It's the kind that uh, uses the rubber O-rings in here to dampen the string sound. So it's very nice tailpiece. So we're going to replace the tailpiece that's on there, put this on there. So, you know, we just have a number of issues. Uh, just basically a full meal deal setup is really what it boils down to uh, with the addition of a tailpiece. So here we go. We have the instrument de-strung and the tailpiece has been removed. I've got warm water here. I'm going to uh, flood the fretboard with warm water in hopes that there will be minimal tear out when we pull these large frets out because these frets really are huge. I mean, they're okay, but I sure don't like playing them. It's going to be much better, I believe, once it gets the standard frets on here. It takes a while when you're wetting down a fretboard. A lot of times the fretboard's been oiled and or just the fact that this ebony grain is tight. And I guess maybe the oils from your hands and different things. And it just takes a while for it to get the water down in the wood a little bit so that when you pull these frets out, they don't splinter the wood so bad. Some places it doesn't seem to get wet at all. Other places it works pretty good. Seems like it's working up in the bigger frets real good, but down here in these small frets it doesn't seem to be working very well. I'm not too worried about these down here because we're going to scallop that anyway, so that's where I'll start pulling them to see what kind of trouble I'm going to get into. These are so big I can't even get my little tiny nippers down in under them. They're so huge. Well, that one pulled perfectly, no problem at all, so let's just keep going and see how well they do. Now yeah, that one chipped out pretty bad, but I had to go to some extremes to get to it. The tangs on these frets are much smaller than any I've ever seen. These are really tiny tangs compared to how big the fret themselves are. I don't believe I've ever seen that fret wire before. It's really different. And that just chipped like crazy, so that's not good. I mean, it's okay because that's where I'm gonna scallop, so I'm still good there, but I hope it doesn't chip like that on the rest of them. I think that one was glued in. That's what I think it was, because it really pulled up a lot of wood. So we're going to try a little more water here just before we get into the meat of the subject. I can tell you for sure when you have to pull frets across this pearl 
that's always iffy. And the reason it's iffy is because that it depends how tightly they're driven in around that pearl. That pearl can chip and crack, and that's not a good thing either. So here we go. This is where it starts to count. Take my time on these. See if I can get, get them out with little effort as possible. Not too bad on that one. I do think they're glued in in some places though. And I got a little chippy there. He said he's not too worried about it on the chips out, chip outs. He's mostly just wants a good plain mandolin. Because these frets, the tang on these frets is so short and small, I think that's why they had to glue most of these frets in there. And it's it's good and bad. It's creating a little problem on pulling them out of there, but it's so far not doing too much tear out because they're not in very deep. I'm afraid though that the glue may have filled up the slot, and it may really be difficult to get my frets in there. This could really be a disastrous thing, actually. So you got your reasons. I know that I've got mine. But somehow all this leaving is weighing on my mind. Well, we got the frets out. Let's just see if we can get him to go back in there. That's going to be the challenge. I'm just going through and I'm cutting all the frets to length. Just save a little time. This will make it go a little faster. Leaving is the only way. I know that is true. But no matter where I go, there's a memory of you. Cause how do you take? Well, with any luck, that should be all of them, and they just go in that order, so there should be no problem keeping it straight. Just thought I'd see if you could see the difference. Look how large the fret, those frets are compared to these frets. I think you can maybe see the difference in the thickness of the top, but yet the tang is very small. It's smaller than the tang that I'm using by, I don't know how much, but quite a bit. Anyway, I'm hoping mine will go down in the uh, slots because, like I said, it's been glued and I'm afraid the slots are going to be really tight. I may have to scrape the slots out with this little X-Acto knife. Yeah, there's all kinds of junk in there. There's definitely glue down in there. Well, we'll see what happens. Here we go. I've got the first one trimmed and ready to go in, so let's see how it goes. No problem at all on that one. Now you see the end of that, it's not nipped off. The end of the tang has to be nipped off, and I'll show you how I do that. I, I put it in these nippers, like so. It's hard to show this up close and hold it at this odd angle. Then you just squeeze down and it nips off the end of the tang there, as you can probably see, as it's different than this end, see? So we have to nip off both ends so that we can put them in here and let it overhang the uh, binding. Somehow I can't forget them all For the good Lord knows I should
tell you those are very hard to drive in because that epoxy or whatever's down in there is really hard and it does not you can't hardly even scrape it out even with a little specially made tool it just doesn't scrape very hard stuff we're gonna pinch the ends off of all of them to try to get them level with the outside of the plastic That's what she looks like in rough form. Turned out pretty good. I'm going to clean that all up off video. Went ahead and did the whole fretboard off camera. You know, got her all cleaned up. Looks really nice. All leveled, you know, polished, beveled. Got the uh, fretboard oiled. I went ahead and buffed out the top and the back. Now we're ready to install the tailpiece and get that on here. Hopefully it would be real nice if these holes would line up, but I'm pretty sure they won't. Well, one of them does. Two of them do, actually. We'll have to drill two new holes for the other two places. But these screws are quite a bit larger, so I'm going to have to enlarge the holes a little bit anyway. I'll leave this one started and mark the other two holes. I'm just going to make sure that we're straight and it looks good. I'll mark the holes with my little awl here and try to get them just as centered as I can get them. And now we'll go ahead and drill the holes with the proper size drill bit. he's got in there for the tail block it must be very hard because it was difficult drilling and it's even though I drilled these holes pretty large for these screws uh, they're difficult to drive because it's a very hard wood apparently it might even be ebony or something okay let's get us a gold in pin button to put on there also because uh, the silver one just doesn't seem to go right how do you take a memory and put it away for good? Well, there is one thing I'm not crazy about on these James tail pieces. The hole is pretty big, but yet it's not quite big enough to put this end down in there. If you don't get the hole in the center perfect, and I didn't re-drill the hole because that's where it already was, then it doesn't sit on there very well. We'll have to see what I can do about that. We're just about ready to put the strings on this baby. The bridge is leaning forward a little bit. I'm going to turn it around and see if how bad it fits. That natural lean forward will be taken out of there whenever you turn it around. Golly, it fits perfect that way too. And it really does fit good. There's no air space under there. Yeah, it's just about as perfect as you could ever want. Just to make sure, I'll put this on there and rub it around just a little bit. Yeah, that's matching up real nice. So that rides better on the top that way and it won't be pulling forward. So I'm gonna leave it like that. And now we'll just put the strings on it. I'll show you what it sounds like. Got the strings on it. I don't have it up to perfect pitch, but it's close. The action is just 
crazy high, which I would expect because it had those big frets on it. We're going to uh, cut this down. Somehow I can't forget them all, for the good Lord knows I should. This is a bone nut, so there was no point in changing the nut out, as long as we can make it work. Real close, but still just a little high. Not going to bore you to death with all that. We're just going to adjust it until we get it all down to a real tight 18 thousandths, which really makes it about 14, 15 thousandths. Well, it's actually the next day after I thought I was finished with this mandolin. I got to be honest with you, this was the hardest fret job I've done in a very, very, very long time. In fact, I don't remember one harder. I really don't, on a mandolin anyway. What happened was, okay, as I mentioned, it had frets on it with the shortest tang I've ever seen in my life. I've never seen a tang that short on frets. The head of the fret was very big. It was big like a guitar fret, but the tang that went down in the slot was like maybe only two thirds the size of a normal tang. That wouldn't present a problem as long as the fret slots are deep enough for the new frets. Well, they weren't. Now, why weren't they? I believe they were cut deep enough originally, but it looks like probably because those tangs on those old frets were so shallow, so short, it looks like they glued them in or epoxied them in. I'm leaning towards epoxy by the way I tried to scrape it out, and it wouldn't scrape for nothing. I sharpened up this little hook blade on the end of my X-Acto knife and used that to get in the frets and scrape out the crud, or tried to. Well, it wouldn't really scrape out, to be honest with you. I was able to get some of it out, but not very much of it. Therefore, driving in the new frets was the hardest job ever. I mean, you had to really drive hard to get them to go down to set level. I know because being a amateur machinist, thousandths of inch matter. They really matter on a fretboard. Thousands of inches matter a lot. A couple of thousandths will cause a fret to buzz. That's why you level them first before you do anything else. You got to get them all within, you know, a thousandth of each other. And that's what leveling them does. Well, it took a ton more leveling than normal. Got it all strung up, you know, tested it, thought it was good, but sure enough, the D and the A strings both buzzed. If you, if you pressed it on the third fret, well then the, I guess you'd say the uh, fourth fret or fifth fret uh, wire was high. So anyway, I took them off, took the strings loose once, refiled them all again, recrowned them, you know, cleaned them up, put it back on, did the same thing. Did it again, this time I really filed the tar out of them. And I also took a hammer and tried to drive those really high frets back down in there some more. Then I really refiled them again, recrowned them, cleaned up the fretboard again, the whole bit. I did three fret jobs on this one mandolin. But I think I've got it perfect now. And the action is very, very, very low. Um, I even at the ninth fret it will hold that pick and it's a 1.14 millimeter pick You can see it holds it with no problem at all. As a matter of fact, I can't get it out It's got a pretty good sound. I think you'll like it. Let's let's play a little bit on it and see what it sounds like I've got a bandage on my finger and it's catching the strings. It's really hard to play with it
got a very good sound. There's nothing wrong with the mandolin at all. It's I like the whimsical look of the peg head there with the, I guess you'd call that a little dragon, a snapdragon, in fact, uh, looking like it's going to try to eat a fly. Or maybe that's just a Venus flytrap. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but regardless, it's kind of whimsical. It's kind of cool. The uh, fretboard the inlay is pretty cool. I don't know who made the mandolin, but it's a pretty cool little mandolin. I'll tell you right now, it was a tough fight, Maul, but we won. Hope you enjoyed it. Share it with your friends. Thanks for watching. <laughs>